Okay, before I solve this, this one, let's do a little review. Remember from the substitution one and two sections, uh, the integral of sine squared x cosine x dx. This would be solved by making u equal to sine x. Right, because remember this would become u squared, and this will be my and this will be my du. All right. Similarly, for cosine squared x sine x, we would say u be cosine x. Right, so the whole point with me showing you this is that this is, we wanna keep these in the back of our mind. We wanna keep uh, that when we have something of the form cosine to a power, oops, that was a mistake there. Okay, cosine squared x. Whenever we have something of the form cosine to a power and sine to a power of one, or just sine sitting there by itself, uh, then we can use a u substitution. And similarly, when we have sine to a power and cosine to a power of one, then we can use a substitution. And that's really what we're doing with uh, these types. Uh, we're really just trying to use trig identities. Uh, when we have things of this form, uh, where we don't have sine, where we have sine to a power and cosine to a power, uh, both of those powers other than one, here's a trick that we can use. All right, so this trick revolves around this identity that we know, um, the Pythagorean identity, um, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. That's, this is an identity that I do actually have memorized. Okay, and from this you can see that if we subtract cosine squared from both sides, we have sine squared x equals one minus cosine squared x. And similarly, if we subtract sine squared x from both sides, we have that cosine squared x is equal to one minus sine squared x. So this is how we're going to proceed. We're gonna pull off a cosine squared x uh, or, or actually, so we're going to turn this into cosine squared x times cosine x. So we have Okay, so that's our first step is to rewrite that like that. All right now we'll use the identity. Right, so remember this cosine squared x here, that became exactly the one minus sine squared x. That's where I got that from. And now we'll distribute. So we're gonna distribute this whole thing to the one and then to the sine squared x. So doing that, that'll give us sine squared x, cosine x minus uh, sine to the fourth, x, cosine x, dx. Right, so remember uh, in the second one where we have sine squared x times sine squared x, so that's sine to the fourth, where we got to add the, the powers. And behind the scenes, uh, remember uh, notationally that sine squared x is the same as saying sine x squared. And so if you have 
something squared times something squared, uh, something squared times something squared, you get, you add the exponents to get sine to the fourth. That's where I got that sine to the fourth there. Now we'll split this thing up over the minus. Remember that the integral of something plus something else is equal to the integral of the first thing plus the integral of the second thing. So using integration here, or using the, that rule, we can write this as the integral of sine squared x cosine x dx minus the integral of sine to the fourth x cosine x dx. And now, once we have that, now we're set up to do a u substitution. So to solve this integral here, I would use, let me give myself a little more room. So now we have two integrals to solve. This one we say u equals sine x and use substitution, and to solve this one, same thing, u equals sine x and use substitution. And that's how you can go about solving those from there. I'm not gonna go about and do the substitution. I, uh, I trust you know how to do that from the substitution section, um, but that's how you would solve this problem.